Hello everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Baidu's exam prep. Welcome to your session on vocabulary for aptitude test. My name is Savitri Krishnamurthy. I teach English and logic at Baidu's. We will be doing a lot of series on uh, reading comprehension, vocabulary, grammar. So make sure you attend these. Today's vocabulary session will help you in all aptitude tests that you are taking. Your names are a little very, uh, you know, I have the chat box is very small, so I'm not able to see the names, but I can see the answers. Uh, Archana, hello. Yeah, I could see the names. All right, are you all ready to start? Saket, hello, good afternoon. Yeah, the names are really tiny. I forgot to increase the font. So I have to squint and look at your name. All right, are you ready to start? Okay, before we start the session, you know what are the rules. You have to prepare. These, uh, these sessions are like guides for you. So once you, these are not comp all comprehensive. I cannot obviously do all the words that I want to do. Yeah, hello, Sonali. All right, I can't do all the words that I really want to do with you. So what am I doing? I'm choosing uh, passages from editorials in my Tuesday editorial class. On Wednesday, mostly it's vocabulary, but from uh, next week, we're thinking of uh, interspersing vocabulary with RC, like how to eliminate options. Uh, you know, uh, how to identify the main point, how to answer database questions, how to answer inference questions. We'll be doing a lot of that in this. So the point is once you get these uh, ideas, these hints, these tips, you need to implement it. Right? There are a lot of tests that are there. We have open mocks. We have so many things going on. Take them, join our courses and see if you implement them and do it the right way. All right, that's the point. All right, today what am I going to do? I'm going to look at, uh, we've done a lot of fill in the blanks and contextual vocabulary where words are concerned. So I thought today we'll do something little different. We'll do direct synonyms and antonyms, words which have been asked in past year, um, other management entrant tests, also a couple from CAT RC passages. We'll look at idioms and phrases today. All right, and then we'll do fill in the blanks and contextual vocabulary based on idioms and phrases. Does that sound good? Ready to start? All right, let's start. Let's look at synonyms first. Identify the syn Now remember, synonym and meaning are two different things. Well, there's a slight difference. Synonym is anything which has a similar meaning, but not exactly the meaning. Synonym would give you everything. So different context a word is used, there would be different meanings given to it. So in an RC passage, sometimes they'll give you both the meanings of the word. Okay, the other day there was a word called, um, I think the word was transitive, I'm not sure. And somebody used the definition of transitive verb. Here he meant something that transferred from generation to generation. Right, that's different. So same way this word immunity, impunity, you know it in two different ways. Now, one of them is the meaning given here. The other meaning I have not given. So what is the meaning of impunity? Option A, strength. B, safety. C, boldness. D, impotence. What do you think is the meaning? Give me the answer quickly. One, uh, Vedant says it's C. Only one answer so far. Where are the rest? I'm only able to see Vedant's answer. Others haven't given or you're guessing? He, uh, this was an act of impunity. He hits the ball over the bowler's head with impunity, without fear, without fear of punishment without fear of any consequences. So therefore, impunity means boldness. It also means something that cannot be punished. Okay, so that is the other meaning of the word that is normally not used. All right, second one. What is the meaning? 
I will be doing root words shortly. Okay, for every word, I'll take you through the root words, and I'll tell you what are the other words which are formed from the same root. All right. Oh, there's a big lag between your answers and my question. All right. See everybody. Excellent. Excellent. All right. What is the meaning of vituperative? See if you can get the answer. After that, I'll give you a sentence. What is the meaning of vituperative? Vituperative speeches, vituperative uh, texts. Okay, hurled vituperative. That's normally not used, uh, but uh, it's mostly used as an adjective. Okay, a vituperative speech. Uh, I think uh, the speech uh, that uh, Fidel Castro gave. No, 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 not Fidel Castro. It was the. Uh, it was. Uh, it was Khrushchev uh, during the Cuban crisis. He gave a speech. Fortunately, it was in Russian, and uh, they said that in those days translations and the text was not available. But uh, if if you had heard it your ears would have burnt vituperative means abusive excellent vituperation means gali gali dena ko vituperative bolte hain all right very good bucolic what is the meaning of bucolic certain painters are famous for their um, bucolic themes uh you you can use it to describe scenery you can describe to you can use it to describe a theme of a painting theme of a book all right what do you think is uh, the meaning of bucolic what is the meaning of bucolic i hope this won't turn out to be red it has turned out to be red okay doesn't matter Uh, what is the mean wait let me get the ink color changed okay bucolic means rural rustic belonging to the rural areas pastoral so bucolic accent people underestimated lalu yadav because of his bucolic accent and his way of dressing but he was politically so sharp so for years he could rule volume is low really okay i'll speak louder all right next canard what do you think is the meaning of canard what is the meaning of canard the is so let's let's start without a sentence first sentence will help you understand it better of course do you know the meaning of canard is it better now okay yes thank you rumor container clever or experiment what is the meaning of canard whenever there is a story about anybody anybody in the press they first deny it saying that the story is a scanner they, they said my opponents my competitors my competitors are just spreading these evil canards about me scanner is a hoax a trick but here it means a rumor what right? is a rumor a false story somebody is spreading in your name is a scanner all right all right do not confuse it with cant cant means hypocrisy all right fortuitous what is the meaning of fortuitous something that is secret secretive actually something that secretive something that happens by chance something that is unfortunate or something that follows a fixed plan what is the meaning of fortuitous question 5 fortuitous something that is secretive 
something that is happening by that happens by chance something that's unfortunate or something that follows a fixed plan what is the meaning of fortuitous question 5 fortuitous what do you think it means no 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 this is the wrong word sorry 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 chance my handwriting is bad and when i write on the tablet it gets worse all right so remember when you 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 normally use fortuitously in a positive sense you don't say fortuitously i was struck by lightning all right but you say fortuitously i came i ran into him in the in the mall and he said today is the last day for registration for cat it was fortuitous that i saw something in the newspaper by chance i saw it and normally it has a positive connotation it means lucky it is used to mean lucky the dictionary will tell you happening by chance now what happens by chance can be accidental can be negative too but fortuitous and fortuitously are generally used in a positive sense in with a positive connotation clear this should be chance all right now we come to the opposites i have only kept the directions in one question and i found when i was solving it just before the class i found i made mistake because, because i forgot it was the antonym not the synonym i wanted which of the following is the antonym or the opposite of the given word inviolate what do you think inviolate means and what is the opposite pure sacred profane or protected pure sacred profane or protected what does in violate mean fortunate fortuitous yeah you can relate fortunate to fortuitous all right what do you think is the meaning of in violate and what is the opposite i am seeing lots of answers for c do you think that's correct what is profane by the way what is the meaning of profane in violate is something that is pure something that has been totally protected hasn't been marred or spoiled by spoiled by anything so the opposite is profane which means irreverent don't confuse it with irrelevant irrelevant means i ask you something you are saying something else that's an irrelevant answer not something that is outside the topic right irreverent reverence means respect irreverent means disrespectful so profane means that means something which is disrespectful which is sacrilegious inviolate means sacrosanct yes inviolate is sacrosanct or pure holy everything associated profane is blasphemous irreverent disrespectful going against norms that is profane so that is the answer name correct what is the opposite of nefarious first what is the meaning of nefarious think about that and then look at the opposite nefarious the nefarious activities of people admirable evadable evil or fragrant nefarious old run down buildings normally are shown in movies to be sites for nefarious activity nefarious means evil something shady something which is not okay so the opposite is admirable what is evadable evadable means avoidable all right something that you are not really looking forward to doing all right uh, the reason i gave fragrant is uh, okay okay there are three words that students often get confused about odious or doriferous noxious and nefarious these two are connected but not they are not synonyms 
nefarious means evil noxious means harmful so you mean you talk about noxious you actually say toxic chem so the word poison anything that is not good for you all right you call when it's when it is a snake bite we call it venom when it is poison something that's harmful to you it's part of a chemical we call it toxic right same way noxious means harmful so we use it to describe noxious fumes union carbide bhopal gas tragedy what happened the fumes of carbon monoxide and all methane whatever escaped turned out to be very harmful caused death so noxious means harmful odious means terrible insufferable you call a person odious because you can't stand that person terrible guy then you say he is an odious person this is odious behavior odoriferous means something that smells bad okay so from odor you get odoriferous okay so that is the difference and fragrant means something that smells good okay tenuous obnoxious obnoxious and odious are uh, noxious and obnoxious are not the same all right noxious means uh, um, harmful obnoxious is the same as odious insufferable obnoxious person there if there's somebody you don't like you can't stand that person you call him an obnoxious person if he behaves badly if he's very rude some people some people i'm not one of them uh, think virat kohli's aggression on the field is obnoxious they don't like it they, they can't stand him others say so what i mean that, that's one way of releasing tension he's always tense he's focusing so much on the match that's his outlet to yell to shout to to, to you know celebrate so what's wrong with that tenuous indo pak relations are held by a tenuous thread there's a tenuous relationship very thin very delicate tenuous so the opposite obviously will be strong now tenuous means slim but it doesn't mean physically slim so you don't call a thin person tenuous you got it it's used to mean delicate thin as in delicate all right oh, 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 okay oh the what am i doing okay one one word gone furtive what does furtive mean tell me we'll look at the opposite later what does furtive mean can you give me a synonym of furtive which we've done in earlier yes this is asking antonyms that's the mistake i also made all right <laughs> all right what does furtive mean furtive glances furtive encounters furtive means what you glance furtively at the other person's paper you know when uh, so the most uh, problem with uh, i don't mind i love taking exams i've been taking it every year so you can imagine every year cat hota hai i have to be there every year that hota hai i have to be there i have to take the test right and uh, sometimes you i look at the person to my left and right just to see what's his name what does he do bore ho jate ho waiting for the test to start so you don't want the other person to know that you are looking at his computer screen that time you look at him in such a way you're giving a furtive glance uska meaning has stealth stealth and secret are the meanings of furtive okay the other meaning for flirtive is clandestine which means secret surreptitious which means secret covert which means secret all right and the opposite of that is open honest above board kuch nothing to hide got it all right we looking at opposites fallow fallow what is the opposite of fallow first and see if you know the meaning of fallow but of mark the opposite yes do press a like button if you are enjoying the session fallow what is the meaning of fallow 
And what is the opposite of fallow? I am sorry. Idle, busy, inert, dormant. I will tell you fallow days, fallow land. It is used as an adjective to describe land, to describe days. Fallow means idle, so its opposite is busy, active. Okay. Idle, inert, and dormant are the synonyms of fallow. Busy is the opposite. All right. I hope you did well. Now, always whenever you are taking it as a test, think of how many you got right, how many you need to work on. Contextual vocabulary uh, sentence will be given with an idiom or a phrase in it. You have tried to understand the meaning of the idiom and the phrase in the context in which it is used. Then it is actually very easy. Sometimes questions are given like this. Tisnet, uh, Maharashtra CET. All these exams have contextual vocabulary. They give you idioms and phrases. Then sometimes they give you fill in the blank. So both I have included. Even before greeting the newlyweds, the guests made a beeline for the food. Some don't even go and be greet the Newlyweds. Create a commotion about something, head directly towards something, eat hungrily and greedily or waste something worthwhile. Made a bee line. How do bees move? If you if you uh, disturb if you disturb a hive of bees, what will happen? All of them come straight at you. Wherever you run, they will chase you like in the comics. So, make a beeline for something means head directly towards something. Very fast, quickly and directly. Alright, make a beeline for something. Past year, IFT, TISNET, Maharashtra CET, some exam ka question. I don't remember which exam. Okay. Set the ball. I forgot to underline this. What is the meaning of the, the host decided to... Set the ball rolling and got up to dance. Set the ball rolling. Get the ball rolling also. There is a slight difference, but it is all used in one sense. To cause a process to start or to continue. Alright? Okay. Since she was in a bad mood, I decided to give her a wide berth. What does the expression give a wide berth mean? To give a lot of freedom, to avoid someone, to give someone advice or to spread information about someone. To give someone a wide berth, is it the same as to give someone a long rope? Is a wide berth the same as giving someone a long rope? I can see lot of answers for 13a, right? So, I am giving you a hint to give someone a long rope. Is it the same as giving someone a wide berth? Now, the sentence, if she is in a, if she is in a bad mood, will you give her a lot of free? Achha, marna hai to maro. No. Give someone a long rope. Your parents decided to give you a long rope before they suddenly said, you know, goats to allow them a lot of uh, area or goats or anything which is tethered, uh, they will give it a long rope, but there is a limit to it. So, your parents say, I have given you a long rope, bahut freedom diya, but there is a limit to it. Iske upar mat jana. So, giving somebody a long rope means giving them quite a lot of freedom to do what they want. But wide berth means to avoid somebody. Give someone a wide rope. She is in a bad mood. I better not go near her. Wo us side baiti hai, I will sit on this side. Far away from her. As far away from her as possible. Alright. So, it is B. Alright. Good. 
हाँ सर ओके द कैप्टन रेजिग्नेशन केम एज अ बोल्ट फ्रॉम द ब्लू ब्लू अ बोल्ट आउट ऑफ द ब्लू ऑलरेज बोथ दिस इज विच वन वॉट डज अ बोल्ट आउट ऑफ द ब्लू मीन अ बोल्ट फ्रॉम द ब्लू मीन a complete surprise see when you look at the stories behind the idioms they are very very interesting bolt is a bolt of lightning okay you have a blue sky you wouldn't expect the bolt of lightning in a blue sky when when there's when there are clouds you'd expect lightning and thunder but suddenly when there's a blue sky if you have a bolt of lightning that's a bolt out of the blue that's a bolt from the blue that is something that's completely unexpected so a complete surprise or complete something which is completely unexpected is called a bolt from the blue got it now because i wrote the captain's resignation there was there some students who marked b i have had a lot of students marking b and c in the context of the passage that is the problem with idioms unless you know the meaning you can't guess because you know what is given the meaning of the idiom doesn't change with context the context is made for the idiom rather than the other way around got it so if you didn't know the meaning you you would guess any of these would happen ha gaya this guy is gone from captaincy great okay but that's not what it is a complete surprise he was not expected to resign or retire i decided to take the bull by the horns and ask her about the missing money what do you think is the meaning of taking a bull by the horns or taking the bull by the horns to fight boldly to be extremely violent to use unfair means or to deal with a difficult situation directly question 15 take a bull by the horns you know a bell is coming towards you you catch hold of the catch hold of the horns then what are you doing you are fighting boldly you are being extremely violent i think you are poor bull all right no no that's not what i mean to use unfair means or to deal with the situation directly confront somebody directly all right somebody wrote ki it is the same meaning as a bell mujhe tu maar no no a bell mujhe tu maar is when you are inviting trouble all right that is different this is taking the bull there are ways in which you know bull fighting happens but this is when you when you charge at the bull's horns directly or going directly you are fighting face off all right what is the meaning of the given expression if any of you read isap tables you will know the meaning of a cat's paw a secret weakness portrayed as a strength a timid person who appears to be brave a usual useful tool for any situation or someone used as a tool to do something dangerous what do you think the answer is for question 16 please follow the instructions given by byju's please press the like button yeah that's all because i find 500 views only 30 likes the 30 likes are the students who attended i don't know ईट का जवाब पत्थर से इज टू टेक वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग रिटेलिएटरी मेजर्स राइट बट दैट्स नॉट द सेम एज दिस अ कैट्स पॉ ऑल आर शोन एज ए माई गॉड दिस इज बी वॉट हैज हैपन टू मी टूडे इन इस फेबल देर इज अ स्टोरी ओके of the a monkey using a cat cat's paw to take hot chestnuts they they like something is being roasted in the fire chestnuts singhadas they're being roasted in the fire and it uses the cat's paw to remove it who will get burnt the cat will get burnt so when somebody is using you as a tool to do something dangerous then you are called a cat's paw but if you are called a cat whiskers the meaning is different find out what it means all right okay cut your coat i'll i'll use them all as animal uh, animal idiom cut your coat according to your cloth what does that mean question 17 cut your coat according to your cloth 
does it mean live within your means use the correct strategy to win learn the rules of the trade or follow instructions carefully what does it mean does it mean live within your means a use the question number vijay number question number nahi to pata nahi chal raha 16 years there is a slight gap from the time i am asking a question to i to me seeing your answers yeah archana thinks it's a nidhi also thinks it's a i am slowly trying to figure out the names from here okay most answers are a there's one b there one c there you have only 1 meter cloth but you want to make a coat for me hoga ki nahi nahi hoga 10 meters to chahiye mere liye to live within your means to live according to your income jitna hai utne mein hi raho living within your means all right i just use the others saying cutting cloth so maybe a tailor to take up the kajal maneka gandhi is an animal lover so when somebody uh, uh, was talking something about bulls in the 80s early 80s uh, there were a lot of bulls on the roads of uh, delhi people once the usefulness of that bull is over they used to leave it on the uh, roads because they wouldn't kill a cow or a bull so she took them all and made a shelter for, for them and then somebody asked her there's so much poverty in india why are you doing it for the bulls she said what's wrong i i'm an animal activist this is 80s 80s may if there were no animal activism wasn't such a big thing so she took up the cudgels for animals she said they also deserve good treatment and people are asking people are dying why are you doing for animals i, said, I love animals that's why i'm doing it so to take up the cudgels means to fight for a cause to fight for somebody okay it it does mean to start a fight but not exactly to initiate it to fight all right all right no context now so this becomes difficult the british were not very fond of the dutch so whenever they or the french for that matter so whenever they use the word french or dutch before any expression you knew that that word was not very positive okay so when you go for a meal right if you split the bill then they call it going dutch thing wrong with it you pay for your meal but for the british it was a break of etiquette if a guy took a girl out for dinner and you say let's split the bills in those days they said oh he is asking her to pay nothing wrong with it but that that was called going dutch dutch courage what does what, what do you think it is knowing that it is a british saying it must be negative there is another expression called french leave french leave means taking leave without prior permission bunking off is just not going that's called french leave so what do you think dutch courage means an accidental act of valor bravery induced by alcohol okay let me give you one more hint lot of the funniest scenes of amita bachchan are a case of him in his character displaying dutch courage one plus where he talks to the mirror for 5 minutes not more than 5 minutes okay so what do you think bravery under the influence of alcohol you don't know what you are doing then you will be very brave you will be ready to fight with the tiger also because you don't know what you are doing right all right what do you think is the meaning of an eye for an eye it was part of a very famous speech an eye for an eye will leave everyone blind but what is the actual meaning for an eye? of an eye for an eye to make someone blind to pay back an old debt to recover an old debt or to retaliate what do you think is the meaning of for an eye for an eye was gandhi ji's uh, policy of ahimsa and non violence an example of an eye for an eye it was the other way somebody slaps you show him the other cheek okay on the other hand an eye for an eye will say if somebody slaps you hit him 10 times okay all the cheeks and eye for an eye means to retaliate to do evil for evil okay that is an eye for an eye 
he did evil to me, I will also give it back. Tit for tat. That is an eye for an eye. Okay? Understood? All right. I hope you enjoyed the session. Know, uh, knew a little bit of idioms and phrases. We will see if we can include RC in the next class. We will make the whole world blind. That is true. The very famous speech. All right. Uh, if you are joining any of our courses, take our three-day free trial, test series for CAT, toppers batch for CAT, comprehensive CAT program and more importantly, any of you trying to join, take the scholarship test and then join. The scholarship test allows you to get a lot of a waiver of the fees. All right. All India Open Mock Analysis, you've already done the first one. The second one is round the corner. All right, use our social media handles, join any and all of them so you get notifications of all our classes. I'll be back with the Tuesday editorial analysis. On Wednesday, I'll see if I can either do vocabulary, root words, or probably start doing reading comprehension uh, passage or two on different strategies for tackling reading comprehension because NMAT is going to happen soon. I'm sure many of you are taking that, right? All right. And if you like the session, do press the like button, share and subscribe, share the video with your friends, subscribe to our channel. Okay. The more likes, the better the response is, then I will do some more sessions. They will say, okay, your, your session is popular. The students seem to like it. Why don't you take one more? If the likes are not there, then we'll say not happening. So you get you say why why don't I have my Wednesday class, ma'am? It's na chani jal raha hai. Okay. So if you really liked it, do press the like button. If you didn't, I'm not asking you to do it. All right. Take care. Bye bye. I'll see you very soon. Next Tuesday, next Wednesday. Bye.